Hey guys, Basic Sorgonomics at Sorgatron on Twitter, Sorgatron.com. Let's talk about filling in the blanks today. These are some of uh, uh, my thoughts. You know, a lot of stuff going on around here. Uh, a lot of opportunities going on. Uh, a lot of people interested, uh, thankfully, blessingly so. A lot of people interested in what we're doing around here at Sorgatron Media, on the podcast, on IndieWrestling.us. And, and, and we've been uh, kind of really... I want to say restructuring. Yeah, we're restructuring. I've talked about that, I think, before on this show. But uh, I, I, I want to take kind of a moment to notice uh, some people that are very much um, um, motivational and also, uh, like I said, filling in the blanks. What do I mean by that? Uh, so let's say this has been this has been a longstanding thing. Like, oh, we're just talking about professional wrestling, for instance. And uh, the wrestlers out there, the ones that have to be good at it, uh, you know, you got to think a good wrestler is not just a good technician in the ring and knows how to deliver a hip toss and a body slam and a headlock, right? They're, they also need to be good on the microphone, good about presenting themselves, take improv classes, um, uh, give, give promos, right? Interact with the fans and have a presence, uh, uh, you know, in that vein, you know, they have to be multifaceted when it comes to that. If they're an independent pro wrestler, they have to book themselves. They have to be a businessman. They have to know merchandise and T-shirts. Um, there's once actually kind of on a side note of that, there's a, a rapper, a rapper is actually MC Frontalon and I think MC Lars were, were both on this track. And the, the, the track was about how I didn't know I was in a T-shirt business as rappers because as rappers, where you make your money is the merchandise. And now you know thread counts and, and, and how to buy in bulk and how to deal with designs and stuff. And when you look into anybody else following their passion, following their creative field, I think a lot of times freelancers deal with this. Um, artistic freelancers, graphic designers, web designers, videographers, things like that. Maybe they're really good about being videographers. Maybe they're really good about designing that website. But maybe they're not so great at managing money, business decisions, etc. I think that's a trap a lot of them get into. It's definitely a trap a lot of them get into. It's a trap I've been getting into is making poor business decisions, right? And, and that can hold down a talented, creative professional. I'm not going to proclaim to have the answer. It's just kind of a realization here. Now, I'm very fortunate that uh, there's a uh, a couple, a couple ladies in my life. That uh, that's a weird way to put that. Uh, I'm only married to one of them. Now that's even weirder. Uh, but anyways, uh, th- that have kind of stepped up and said, you know, they want to help with things. And uh, and and like I said, really kind of filling in the blanks. Uh, whether it be business minded, whether it be looking at some of the aspects of what we're doing here in the storytelling and creative and social things, um, and really, and I, I, like I said, filling in the blanks. Back to that phrase again. Um, for five years, five years. More than five years. Well, definitely more than five years. More like uh, eight years. I've been doing independent work. Longer if you count a podcast and creative work, right? And definitely there are faults that have been in there for several, several, several years. And probably the ones that are mostly holding me back. The the decision making, the the hesitations, whatever the case may be. And it's taken uh, these other people to kind of look and say, no, we need to do this, this, and this. And and I need somebody, and I'm recognizing I need somebody to uh, uh, kind of point those out and say, we're, no, we're going to do things this way. Um, and I think a lot of people need to consider having that. Um, there's, there's, so we've talked about the expert mind in, in some other uh, versions of this and, and other podcasts that we do around here. Uh, you think that you're the expert. You think you know everything. Not everybody has that aptitude to be the person that can do everything around them. And I think it's really hard to be successful if you are that person in general. Unless you're super, super talented in every way you touch, which I don't know if that exists, honestly. Um, there's a phrase of uh, surround yourself with people smarter than you. I'm sure I'm poorly paraphrasing that. But I think it's important. Um, This is why I have lunches with my colleagues. This is why I have lunch with my colleague that works with Facebook advertising and and knows so much about. This is why I've met with 
my friend who's like a really good with a search engine optimization and trying to understand that a little more. Little bits and pieces here and there. And I try to absorb as much as possible. And, and, and all of those little bits from my friends on top of my own experiences, podcasting, doing social media for clients, etc., has grown my perceptions and my reactions uh, to to my business dealings and my my clients and my my situations and, and growing content and growing audiences, um, and and I think uh, and especially if you are doing a business, uh, I think a lot of times what you get is uh, uh, you know you have the creative side. I mean, you know, I'm listening to a lot of stuff about startups, and you know you have the creative person that has the drive, has this, and then you get the CEO, CFO, whatever the case may be that gets how to do that business thing, that CEO, whatever thing. Steve Jobs was the businessman with a lot of foresight. Steve Wozniak was the talent that put the board together. But Jobs was still the one that says, no, it's got to be pretty. No, it has to have a certain level of aesthetic to it. Right? Somebody will look at your work that's already good and says, this is the thing that's going to make it even better. I think I'm really settling, I don't want to say settling into this because I feel like if you're settling into something, um, as I feel way too comfortable around the studio, which means maybe it's time to grow out of the studio. But that's another talk. Uh, but I digress. Hooven. Larry. Um, but no, I think look at the thing you're doing. Um, that creative critique, that outside the box thinking, somebody that doesn't entirely know and sometimes not even understand completely what you're doing, but can look at it from another angle. Um, a lot of us have had issues, as maybe discussed on here, about um, how we're perceived and what people think we do and what people think or not realizing the thing we want to get hired to do, for instance. And it takes stepping back and having somebody look at that and say, I, I didn't know you did video for clients, for corporations. I thought you just did funny podcasts about professional wrestling. That's my mistake. That's all I've been presenting. And that's been a shocker and, a, and, a, and, and kind of put me back on my heels a little bit uh, as I'm trying to, again, grow this and kind of redirect things, you know, uh, and, and trying to figure out what is the next phase of this business. Uh, when I when I started to go independent, I understood whatever I'm going to be doing five years from now is not going to be the same thing I was doing then. And there's going to be growth and social media is going to be different. How we're delivering video is going to be different. Uh, as, as you're listening to this, uh, on the day that this is released, uh, YouTube is launching YouTube Gaming, which is another game changer. Not to kind of put that pun in there uh you know and now that's not something that was considered as a possibility for who knows maybe a client wants to do something like that five years ago you have to be on your toes and i think especially in something fast moving like this um you need somebody to look at and say hey you've been doing it the wrong way for too long or you've been doing it the old way that doesn't work anymore so so fill in the blanks Find that business person that fill in. Sometimes people will sell for you. Had a good discussion actually today. It will be released on Thursday uh, with Awesome Chat um, with uh, Frank Mergy of Pit Pittsburgh Podcast Network. And we talked about that a little bit, about kind of you know selling yourself and how it's so hard for creative professionals and, uh, and to be, step outside of looking exactly what, they, what you have here. So what do you need to fill in the blanks? Let me know. Let me know in the comments. Let me know at Sogatron on the Twitter. Is there any pieces to your puzzle you, you think are missing? Or maybe you haven't figured it out yet. Let's chat. We'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.